it don't have to sound slick to hit right here. It don't have to sound cool to rule my year. Ain't no particular rank. It might eventually sit. I just want your album name on my list. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are, we've made it to the end, the grand finale of Tom's Hit Parade's 2022 year-end spectacular-ish. This is the big list, the one you've all been waiting for, I assume. This is where I t uh, count down my top 25 favorite studio albums of 2022, along with eight honorable mentions. Yes, I usually make the honorable mentions about a quarter of the length of my list, but this time there is just so much stuff, uh, I decided to bump it out to a third of the length of my ranked list. Uh, but yeah, we've got a lot of ground to cover here, but before I get into it, uh, just thought some, uh, give you some notes, a little introduction here before I kick out the list. Uh, I don't know if it's just me or what, but the music offerings this year were crazy good. Uh, but it didn't start out that way. Uh, as recently as July, I was afraid that I'd have trouble coming up with 15 albums to put on my year-end list. But things picked up after that and basically had gone crazy uh, by Thanksgiving. Uh, there may have been years where I was more excited for individual releases than maybe any of the releases this year, but in terms of consistently good music throughout the year, this was a tough year to beat. Uh, unless I was just way more into music this year for some reason. And, and I used to dismiss YouTubers who don't do countdowns or ranked lists at year's end, but now I can understand why. <laughs> Seriously, I haven't had this difficult a time preparing my favorite albums of the year list in maybe the whole five years I've been doing this channel. And yes, it's been that long, believe it or not. Uh, in fact, I almost decided to just group these albums in a tier list format. You know, unnumbered top five, middle five, bottom five, etc. Uh, it'd almost make more sense to do it that way, since depending on my mood on any given day, I could justify putting any one of my top five albums at number one. But ultimately, I'd feel, and maybe you would too, that I was weaseling out or half-assing it well, without making a ranked list. And, and then when I decided to keep the ranked list format, uh, let's face it, ranking stuff is fun, but aggravating, but fun. Uh, I was going to bump it out from 25 items to 30, but in the end I decided that less is more, even though it meant making some uh, unfortunate cuts in the list. As for who you'll see on this list, uh, mostly current favorites. Uh, having limited listening hours per week forces me to give them my, uh, my attention first. Uh, but there's a couple of old favorites with their first albums in many years, a handful of new-to-me artists, and maybe a surprise or two, including a genre that has never been represented before on my year-end list. Uh, what you won't see are several names that appeared on lots of other YouTubers' year-end lists. And boy, oh boy, did I watch a lot of them. <laughs> uh, but for no other reason than the fact that I never took or had the time to check them out. Uh, but I do plan on bringing back my second thoughts list next year, uh, so any 2022 releases that I missed will have a chance to make that list. How this list finally turned out was surprising in other ways, too. Uh, albums that were in my mid-year top 10 slid further down than I expected, and one or two albums that I nearly dismissed as honorable mentions rebounded in a major way. So what qualifies for this list? It's pretty simple. Full-length studio albums released during the calendar year of 2022, between January 1st and December 31st. But also, to make my list, it needs to be something I bought on physical format. Yes, that's an arbitrary line and probably unfair to artists who can't afford to press physical media. But for me, Owning an LP or a CD is an essential part of the music experience, and a strong measure of my love for an album. By the way, I call this list my favorite albums because that's what it is, and because I'm just a music fan. If you want a list of the best albums, there are plenty of music critics out there. I try to listen to a little bit of everything, and I wish this list were truly all-encompassing, but since I have a full-time job and I need eight hours of sleep every night, I'm going to miss some stuff. This list is totally subjective, and you probably won't agree with it, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Besides, isn't that what makes seeing other people's lists so much fun? Okay, before we dive into the ranked list, let's go ahead and knock away the eight honorable mentions. These are just, just in alphabetical order. First off, we have Brian Adams with So Happy It Hurts. This was actually in my mid-year top ten. Unfortunately, it dropped off a bit. Still as good as he ever was, it just there was so much other good stuff that, uh, that beat him out. Then we have 
Gershwin Country by Michael Feinstein. And as you can see by the front cover here, there are a whole bunch of guest artists on here as well. Uh, and as the title suggests, it's, it's uh, Gershwin songs done in a country style. And kind of like with the Elton John uh, compilations that came out a few years ago, there was a pair of them that came out. Gershwin is a songwriter that kind of uh, transcends genre. I mean, it's amazing how well these songs uh, cross over into a country format. Great, enjoyable album. Then we have one that would kind of hurts to put it in the honorable mentions, a Palomino by First Aid Kit. Excellent stuff. This is kind of like uh, the Eagles if they were uh, uh, fronted by women, or if, if they were made up of just two women. So just very uh, country-glazed pop rock stuff. Excellent stuff. Great, great stuff. And then we have the only LP in my honorable, honorable mentions. This is Super 8 by Conan Gray. Yes, he was my honorable mention at the uh, mid-year, uh, but uh, yeah, and yes, uh, it's just unfortunately it uh, kind of shrunk on me more than I thought it would. A couple of good songs on here like uh, Astronomy and Jigsaw were two of my favorites, uh, but yeah, just as I said, so much good stuff uh, that came along later on in the year. It unfortunately got knocked down to the honorable mentions. And then we have, this one really hurt to put in the honorable mentions, Colin Hay with his latest album, uh, Now and the Evermore. He's as good as he ever was. It's just, you know, as I've said, and I'll probably say several times, uh, too much competition this year. Uh, but yet, if you've liked Colin Hay's stuff in the past, don't take his honorable mention status from me as being, uh, the, as saying that this is a bad album. It's still very, very good. He's as good as he ever was. Give it a listen if you haven't yet. And then another one, <laughs> all of these kind of hurts to put in the honorable mentions category. Uh, the Kooks, uh, 10 tracks to Echo in the Night. Excellent stuff. They kind of uh, uh, have a bit of a Duran Duran thing going on on this album. So that's, you know, it was it was in my top 25 for quite a while uh, until just like a couple, couple of months ago, it got knocked down to honorable mention. Uh, but it was still really, really good stuff. Uh, just as good as the Kooks have ever been. This is what their sixth album, fifth album. Very, very good stuff. And then we have Joe Satriani with his latest album, Elephants from Mars. Uh, he does stuff on every one of his albums. He does something with the electric guitar that he's never done before, that uh, perhaps nobody has ever done before. Uh, and yes, so just it, it just barely left, uh, barely edged out of the ranked countdown. But yeah, still fantastic stuff. And final honorable mention is Strome with his album Multitude. Wonderful stuff. I mean, a kind of hip hop. R&B, chill wave, certain maybe chill wave sort of stuff, but it's all done in French, and uh, French is part of the appeal for it, uh, of it to me. And yeah, just as good as his uh, previous album. Strome, uh, if you might recall, was kind of an accidental discovery on my part uh, years ago, uh, but yeah, this uh, he's kind of stuck with me, obviously. Uh, this is a very, very good album. Check it out. Okay, are you guys ready for my top 25 favorite studio albums of 2022? I hope you're ready for this first one, because it's going to knock your socks off. Those of you who have known me for a while, it's going to be unexpected. I hope you're sitting down for that one. But yes, as I so eloquently and poetically wax uh, at the beginning of every one of my favorite albums of the year list, let's do this! Number 25 on my list is Melt My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Yes, a hip-hop album on my year-end list. Can you believe it? The time has come. The sky is falling. No, um, yeah, I'd seen this on a lot of other people's uh, YouTubers' year-end lists, and from the way they were describing it, it kind of sounded like it might be something that I might like. So, and I gotta say, this was a pretty darn good first introduction to a, a, an honest-to-goodness hip-hop album. Uh, yeah, lots of good stuff on here. Um, the Last is one of my favorite songs. A lot of people didn't like John Wayne. I kind of like John Wayne. Um, the song, not the guy. Oh, X-Wing, because of its Star Wars reference. I did not like uh, the fact that it was probably the song with the uh, greatest preponderance of the N-word. That still makes me uncomfortable he to hear that in song, uh, even if it, even if it's an African-American saying it. I still It still gives me the willies. Uh, Zatoichi, I thought, was a really interesting one. And yeah, lots of jazz influences on this one. So yeah, if jazz, jazz-inflected hip-hop sounds interesting to you, I, am rec I recommend trying this out. And then we have number 24 uh, on my list is Chloe in the Next 20th Century by Father John Misty. Yes, Father John Misty has been a hit-and-miss artist with me. I did not care much for uh, I Love You, Honey Bear when I tried it out a few years ago. 
uh, just didn't click with me. But then uh, early this year, I found um, Pure Comedy on the half off rack at a, at a record store and picked it up and really enjoyed that. I mean, just such sharp wit on those songs. And sharp wit is something that uh, you will find on this and pretty much any other Father John Misty album. Uh, this one kind of goes into the well, easy listening, uh, throwback pop kind of stuff. Uh, there's uh, everything from 40s and 50s chamber pop kind of stuff to uh, maybe a little bit of Tin Pan Alley as well. And uh, other songs like Track 2, for instance, have a very much of a James Taylor vibe. Uh, so, so yeah, if that kind of stuff sounds like it might be up your alley, I recommend giving this a try. Uh, it, it's just as fair warning, it's different from all the other Father John Misty albums out there, but it's still very, very good. Number 23 on my list. This is a really good example of how long 2022 felt and at the same time how short 2022 felt. I could have sworn, I almost left this album off the list because I could have sworn it came out in January of 2021. But it didn't. It came out in January of 2022. It is Night Call by Years and Years. I guess uh, another great synth pop album by this uh, this group. Well, technically, I guess he's operating as a solo artist now. But yeah, if you love 80s drenched synth pop, uh, I, you pretty much won't go wrong with this album. It's fantastic stuff. And <clears throat> on we go with number 22. Uh, this is this is the first LP in my list. There are quite a few LPs. But yeah, this one was uh, quite a bit higher up before, but um, I, I couldn't bear to bring him down to the honorable mentions. Uh, besides, he's he's still going at it at age, what is he, almost 90 years old now. Uh, Willie Nelson with his album A Beautiful Time. And you will have a beautiful time listening to this album. It's just fantastic. I mean, he's still got his voice. Uh, his, his his songwriting sense is still there. And it's just, uh, I, I couldn't pick any really... Uh, oh, Energy Follows Thought is a really, really good song. He also does a cover of, um, a couple of covers... Uh, with a little help my, from my friends, the John Lennon song. Yeah, so many good songs on here. Live Every Day is another fantastic highlight of this album. But yeah, Willie Nelson is as strong as he's ever been on A Beautiful Time. Wonderful album. Number 21. This one you probably haven't heard of. Uh, this one is Speed of Heat by Skunk Baxter. Now this guy, uh, on his resume, he uh, has the group's Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers. He was a member of them, of you know their recording bands, and I think also their touring bands for quite a while, uh, back in his earlier days. So yes, he has an impressive resume. He's been a uh, rock and roll guitarist, session guitarist, performing guitarist for decades, probably 50 years by now. And this is uh, his first solo album. After all this time in the industry, he's never put out a solo album until now. And it's fantastic. Uh, he does covers of, as you would probably expect, knowing his resume, he does covers of St a Steely Dan song, uh, My Old School, and, oh, Do It Again, which is also a Steely Dan song. So covers of two Steely Dan songs and lots of other stuff on here is just fantastic. Twelve songs, all wonderful, and uh, there are some guest performers on here. Sorry, I didn't have notes prepared for that. I should have. Should have had. But yeah, fantastic stuff. And <laughs> as an unrelated note, Go look up the uh, Wikipedia page for Jeff Skunk Baxter and see the, the secondary career that he kind of wandered into. It's probably the least thing you would expect, but it shows that he is a keenly, keenly intelligent person. So, But anyway, yes, Skunk Baxter's Speed of Heat is my number 21 album of 2022. My number 20 favorite album of 2022 is Palomino by Miranda Lambert. Yes, uh, country. You're going to see quite a bit of country in this year-end list. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this week, country and female female artists, of which she's both, incidentally, um, have been uh, it, taking up more of my listening hours uh, every year that's gone by for the last few years. And yes, this one I did not expect much out of, and I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I, I've, I'm sure I've heard Miranda Lambert before, incidentally, but this is the first album of hers that I picked up. But uh, yeah, Geraldine is one of the highlights, and that's kind of, kind of a a spiritual sequel, if you will, to Dolly Parton's song Jolene. Uh, same kind of stuff. I'm sure she took inspiration from Dolly Parton for that song. And uh, the song Music City Queen features the B-52s. Of all artists to appear on a country album, the B-52s. So you got to... And, and that, that was an incentive for me to check out this album. And, oh, what were some of the other songs? 
uh, Country Money. That was kind of a fun, uh, fun little song. That's what makes the jukebox play. I have a penchant for songs about music and, you know, songs relating to music type things. So if a song's got the word jukebox in the title, I'm probably going to listen to it and like it. So, yeah. But, yeah, um, I would recommend this album highly. Yes, this is a wonderful, wonderful album. Number 19 on my list is something completely different. It is a a jazz album. It's strictly classified as jazz, but it's it's quite a bit different. It is the album Hyperdimensional Expansion Beam. What else are you going to call an album, right? Uh, by the group The Comet Is Coming. That's the name of the al- the artist. And let me make sure I got the title right. Hyperdimensional Expansion Beam. Yes, that is the name of the album. Imagine if an EDM artist set in with a jazz combo. That's what you're going to get with this. Very interesting. Jazz and... Another thing that kind of makes it makes this album an unexpected pleasure for me is it's kind of improvish and uh, you know freeform in a way, and I don't usually like freeform jazz, but yeah, it's kind of it, it must be the the electronic aspect of it that draws me in. But yeah, just kind of a, an undercurrent of electronic stuff, and well, in, in some cases the the uh, electronic beats and stuff are fairly heavy. They don't overwhelm the jazz music. But uh, they, they, they accompany it all, always. But yes, some great stuff. And yeah, as if you couldn't tell by the name of the group and the name of the album, the group is kind of uh, sci-fi and science and astronomy inspired. Uh, I've got their last album, which uh, I cannot remember the name of, it, name of it. And that one was more laid back than this album is. This is more of uh, kind of an upbeat kind of thing. But yes, very different, very interesting, very fun. Listen. Yes, the comet is coming with hyperdimensional expansion beam. And number 18, here we go back to something completely different from the last two. Uh, Blue Skies by Seth MacFarlane. Yes, whenever Seth MacFarlane is an artist, and I, I should do a video of, you know, a list of artists whose albums I will prob- I almost always buy without even, you know, without question, and, us- and often without even hearing a single off of it. Seth MacFarlane is one of those artists Uh, He's got the fantastic voice. He's got a voice like Sinatra's, and just as good as Sinatra, in my opinion. And that's the kind of music he does also, is that uh, Great American Songbook kind of stuff. And this is his sixth album, I think. And every one of them is good. And like the other albums, he takes songs that are um, a little more off the beaten path. Not the stuff that you would expect to hear Michael Buble cover or Josh Groban cover or, you know, people like that. Uh, although he does probably probably on this album more than any others, he picks uh, songs that are a little more familiar. The title track, of course, "Blue Skies," and uh, okay, I'm completely blanking on it. I could have sworn it was on this album. Oh, "Out of Nowhere," that's another one. Uh, I, I don't know if that one's really really popular, but I I knew it pretty well from before. But anyway, and this is the first album actually since his debut on which he has an original song written by himself and a couple of collaborators. That's the closing song, Unless I Do It All With You. And it fits right in with the other songs. I didn't realize until reading the liner notes that that was an original song. So if you love that throwback jazz pop stuff from the 40s and 50s, put Seth MacFarlane on your listening list. Definitely. He's fantastic. Number 17 on my list is uh, an artist. This is another artist, uh, one of a few in this year's list that... I've heard of, obviously, just never given a proper listen to, and this was the first album by this artist that I picked up, Carly Rae Jepsen, with her album The Loneliest Time. Excellent stuff. Uh, She kind of, uh, from what I gather, uh, from what other people have said about this album compared to her other ones, she kind of stretches her legs or stretches her, puts out her feelers into other genres. Uh, More on this one, like uh, the song Western Wind is possibly my favorite on here, and that has a bit of a, as the title might suggest, a bit of a country vibe to it. Very interesting feeling on that one, an interesting mood on that one. And you've got uh, Talking to Yourself is one of my favorite songs on here. Uh, The song So Nice has kind of a late 70s, early 80s R&B vibe to it. And, you know, yes, she is a pop artist, so there's still plenty of that, you know, contemporary pop sound on the album as well. One of the early temptations of it was she actually features fellow Canadian Rufus Wainwright on a song. You know, and Rufus Wainwright is like an, a full generation ahead of her. So, you know, it's like kind of like with Charlie Puth and James Taylor. You wouldn't expect these young artists to necessarily bring 
one of the older generations in to uh, to feature on an album, but she did. They sound great together, and that's on the the title track, the the uh, closing track on the album. But yeah, very very good stuff. This is definitely clinching the fact that I'm going to check out more of Carly Rae Jepsen, um, her back catalog uh, going forward in this year. Very very good stuff here. And now number sixteen on my list is another Canadian artist. Uh, you know, back to back Canadians here. Although these guys were, up until just a few days ago, they were a little higher on my list. Any of you out there who do year-end lists, you do it too, I'm sure. The last minute you get a bee in your bonnet and you need to change stuff around. But anyway, this is a, a little in a different vein than Carly Rae Jepsen. This is Power Pop, and this is a group called Sloan. They've been around for since the early 90s, late 80s, and it's been the same lineup, uh, pretty much the same, same lineup, I think, since their inception. And this is, what, their 12th album, I think. And some great, great stuff here. And for those of you who don't know what Power Pop is, basically it's uh, the songwriting sensibility of pop music, but with the instrumentation of garage rock. You get the best of both worlds. You don't have to be accused of being a pop person if you listen to Power Pop. So, But yes, a great album here. And the highlight song on here is... Well, there are lots of great songs on here, obviously, but uh, I believe it's Human Nature, which is it kind of is an interesting twist. Uh, you know, most people don't want to be the subject of, of gossip, but Human Nature is about those of us who feel left out or, or, or uh, you know, otherwise regret that we're not the subject of gossip. And yes, that's one of the things that this group is known for is being, you know, clever with their lyrics and with their the song songwriting and stuff. And another thing about Sloan is, I think from the beginning, uh, it's been a group that, you know, with a lot of groups, only one or two members do the songwriting. But with Sloan, every member of the group is going to have at least one song written by them in each album. Uh, this is only the third album of theirs that I have. They've put out like 12. So, uh, but yeah, this is so good. I'm, I'm going to have to delve more into Sloan uh, this coming year. So yeah, great album. My number 15 favorite album of 2022 is Special by Lizzo. And no, this is not a uh, an exclusive or limited ed edition release. I just put this in a purple tinted jewel case. So just so you know, it's, it's, it's nothing special, but the album is special and it's titled special. But anyway, Lizzo is back as she's, uh, in my opinion, this album, I think maybe a little bit better than her previous one. But uh, the title track is fantastic. And About Damn Time, the single, is uh, one of my favorites as well. And yes, um, she is... Uh, going strong and, in some cases, doubling down with her uh, message of uh, self-empowerment and, uh, you know, being being proud of who you are and not letting anybody talk you down based on your appearance or anything of the sort. So, yeah. And and, and the hooks are just very tasty and uh, earwormy, and everything you've come to expect from Lizzo is right here in this album. Very, very good R&B pop album. Number 14 is, uh, well, it's kind of an, another hip-hop album. It's not really strictly hip-hop, though. It is Tank and the Bangas with their album Red Balloon. And now, I remember seeing their previous album, Green Balloon, uh, way back when in 2019, when it first appeared on the new release rack at House of Records. For some reason, I still remember the first day that I saw it. Um, I didn't pick it up. Uh, the fact that they are on Verve Forecast, the Verve Forecast label, kind of intrigued me, but I didn't pick it up. I went home, streamed it, and I had a very low tolerance for hip-hop at the time, and it had a fair dose of hip-hop in it, so back then it wasn't for me. But, um, you know, all these years later, when I heard that this album was out, I decided, you know what, I want to give them another try, another listen, so I streamed the entire album, and I really enjoyed it. So I guess, you know, my listening tastes have changed in the last few years. Uh, yes, uh, and this is an interesting album. Some songs are very hip-hop, you know, completely hip-hop. Other songs are some of the most, some of the smoothest and tastiest 70s-tinged soul grooves that I've heard in years. So this is, I mean, if you love 70s-flavored soul, you got to hear this album. It is fantastic. And as you would expect, those songs are the ones I gravitate to more. Even though the hip-hop songs are, are not bad, they're a bit more on the weird and wacky, wonky side of hip-hop. Uh, but some of my favorite songs here are Café du Monde. That is one of my favorite songs of the entire year, is Café du Monde. Uh, the closing track on here, Where Do We All Go, 
featuring Lala Hathaway and Jacob Collier, my man Jacob Collier. Um, that one is about, uh, as the title might suggest, the ages-old question, um, what happens to us when we pass away? Where do we all go when we die? So, yeah, it's just kind of a, kind of, you know, not necessarily proffering any answers to that question, but just, you know, asking the question. One of those philosophical-ish type songs. And uh, Communion in My Cup, featuring the Hamiltones, uh, that not only is it a really good song, but uh, I found out that it was actually on Barack Obama's list of his favorite songs of the year. So that's neither here nor there. Just thought I would mention it. But yes, I love this album. And yes, since I picked this one up, I went back and bought Green Balloon. They still had it in stock at House of Records. I don't know if it was the same CD that they got in all those years ago that I saw on the racks, but anyway. Fantastic album. And the albums just get fantasticer from here. Fantastic is a word, isn't it? Anyway, number 13. This is one of two groups that um, from the 80s that haven't made an album in a while. Who I, I have their f first couple albums or a couple of their early albums and decided to give them a try, and they've still got it. Tears for Fears, and their album The Tipping Point. Wonderful stuff. Um, it's been 17 years since Tears for Fears put out uh, their previous album, and as a result, they sound a little different, perhaps a little more mature, and uh, one thing I like about this album, it's going to sound a little strange, and I think I said this in my mid-year uh, mid countdown, uh, they remind me of, at least, um, is it Kurt Smith, I think, who is the, the primary vocalist? He reminds me of Gary Barlow's voice. Uh, and Gary Barlow is a member of the British boy band Take That. This stuff reminds me of Take That's more recent albums, uh, after they uh, after they split up and came back with a more, a more adult contemporary sound. Yes, I'm comparing Tears for Fears to an eight, to a... 90s and 2000s boy band, so I, that's sacrilege to some people, but, you know, hear me out. It's a good thing, trust me. Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, if you like this album and you have a, an aversion to boy bands, listen to Take That's album Beautiful World. That might change your, change your mind. But, uh, yeah, some great songs on here and, uh, you know, more, more philosophical stuff. Uh, one of the guys just went through, it was either a divorce or uh, the passing of a loved one, I can't remember which, but uh, yeah, the title track is great. Uh, no Small Thing is a fantastic opener. Break the Man and My Demons are two of my favorites. And those are, if there are any songs that uh, throw back toward uh, Tears for Fears early stuff, it's those two songs, particularly My Demons. Uh, but yes, fantastic album. Uh, you you got to check it out if you haven't yet. Uh, Tears for Fears. Uh, pretty much haven't lost a thing, in my opinion. Uh, number 12, and uh, this is an album that I almost passed up um, because I I grew dangerously close to getting rid of her debut album. It, it shrank on me a bit, but after I picked this one up, her previous album uh, grew on me again. We're talking Sigrid with her album How to Let Go. If you liked her, her debut album, this one might actually even be a little bit better. Uh, great stuff. The same fantastic uh, Norwegian pop. She's a Norwegian pop singer. Her voice is... Her, she has a, a bit of an idiosyncratic voice. It's not off-putting. It's just you can you can tell it's her voice. And I'm not sure what it is about her voice that I like, but I like it. And uh, so many good songs on this album. Uh, Mirror is a really, really good song about self-image. Probably my favorite song on the album. And uh, Dancer is another great song. Uh, a Driver Saved My Night and, and that, in a way, is, uh, you know, I was talking about uh, Miranda Lambert's song, Geraldine being a uh, spiritual cousin to Jolene by pa uh, Dolly Parton. A Driver Saved My Night kind of reminds me of Elton John's song, Someone Saved My Life Tonight. Whether it was intentional on her part or not, uh, so it may just be the similarities of the, of the titles, but anyway. Uh, Mistake Like You is a great ballad. That was the, the best ballad on the album by far, and uh, Bad Life... With uh, then that one features uh, "Bring Me the Horizon." Didn't think that it would work with uh, that you know kind of an emo emo-ish group teaming up with a Norwegian pop singer, but somehow it does, uh, and, and, it's, and it's got a great message in that song too. A fantastic message in that song. So yeah, just missed my top ten by well by two spots, uh, but it is a very worth very well worth a listen. How to Let Go by Sigrid is number twelve on my list. And uh, rounding out stuff before the top 10, uh, this is kind of like uh, Tears for Fears, 
just a couple minutes ago. Tears for Fears gets all the uh, has gotten all the buzz. This one seems, seems to have been pretty much ignored on every. I don't think it's mentioned on any other year end list that I watched on YouTube. And yet it is kind of like Tears for Fears in that it's another '80s group. They haven't made an album in a while, and the same lineup of the band. This is The Fix with their album Every Five Seconds. And I didn't realize uh, that The Fix had put out an album until uh, October, November, I think. Uh, but I uh, streamed it and really, really enjoyed it. And yes, this one, as you can tell by their places in the countdown, this one, in my opinion, edges out Tears for Fears just a bit. Uh, it's fantastic stuff. These guys, I think, are a little bit closer in their sound to their earlier days than Tears for Fears. Uh, not the Tears for Fears departing from their sound is necessarily a bad thing. But yes, uh, some great stuff on here. Uh, some of my favorite songs are uh, Spell and Cold. Uh, Take What You Want is another great song, and Never Ending is another really, really good one. And uh, this is a double album, and one of the really, really cool things about this one is exclusive to the vinyl edition. You know, usually CDs are the things that have bonus tracks. And, and this one, the bonus track on this isn't even on streaming. So the LP is the only way you can get it. I mean, somebody uploaded a needle drop up to YouTube so you can listen to the song. It's called Dreaming. It's on side D, or, you know, the, the flip side of the second LP on here. It's a 14-minute instrumental that is just fantastic. I, I wish it were available on streaming because then I could, get, I could have my Echo play that uh, and it would help me, it would help lull me to sleep. You know, not to say that it's a boring song. It's just, it's very, very relaxing. Just a beautiful song, a beautiful way to close out the vinyl edition of the album. So, yeah, wonderful stuff. And as you can see, cover art is by the same uh, artist that did their early albums. One of my favorite cover, uh, album covers of the year. I didn't do favorite album covers this year, but uh, I kind of wanted to, but decided not to. But yeah, number 11 on my list, The Fix, with their album Every Five Seconds. Check it out. Okay, it's top 10 time, people. We're getting serious now. <laughs> yeah, like I wasn't serious in the rest of my countdown. Duh. Anyway, uh, number 10 on my list is Straight Up Country. And this we're not talking pop country, bro country, R&B country, any of that. This is country country. It is Hickory Avenue by Jack Settle. You'll recall this was in my mid-year countdown. And it is number 10. Okay, full disclosure, uh, I am acquainted with this, this guy. I met him. Uh, he was one of the uh, groom's people in Noah's wedding. So I got to meet him, hang out with him back in Oklahoma in March. Great guy. And so that plays some into um, why he's in the top 10. I mean, I mean, first of all, if I didn't know him, I wouldn't know about him probably because he's an independent artist, still very, very small. But uh, I sure hope that this album helps him to earn uh, a bit more stature in in the country music world, because this, this is an excellent album, I tell you. And this is coming from somebody who is not into the good old-fashioned country stuff. Uh, some great story. That's one thing I've come to appreciate about country music is the storytelling in the songs. And Jack does it uh, as well as anybody, you know, any veteran Nashville major label performer, in my opinion. Uh, Interstaten is, it's it's a bit more of a fun song, but it's it's probably the best opening track of any album I heard in 2022. Interstaten is great. And uh, St Settle Down Jack, it's a play on, play on his name, uh, and that's got a bit of a, a funny uh, vibe to it. And uh, Like a Rattlesnake is a really good song, has a good message to it, and that is, I believe, the only uh, purely acoustic song. I think it's acoustic, if I recall correctly. Sorry. <clears throat> it's been a while since I've listened to this one. And uh, J.W. and Topaz. Now, when you're talking storytelling songs, that one is up there. J.W. and Topaz, fantastic. Uh, Bad Habit is another great song. And the title track, The Closer, Hickory, Hickory Avenue, reminds me of my relationship with my sister. It's about his sister. Uh, you know, my sister was older than me and is passed away. His sister is younger than him and is still very much alive. But still, when, you're, when somebody's singing a song about their sister... I'm, I'm going to think about my sister, so so I've got an attachment to it. Uh, but yeah, very, very good album. Uh, and from somebody who's not into country music, remember, well, not much into country music. Uh, but yeah, Hickory Avenue by Jack Settle. Highly recommended. It is available on streaming services, so check it out. 
Number nine. Now, I mentioned at the top of this video how there were some albums that were... I almost left them as honorable mentions, and they rebounded in a major way. This is probably the best example of that. Uh, this one I was not impressed with when I first listened to it, probably because of the price. I paid $40 for one LP. You know, when you pay that much for a record, you want it to, you want it to kick ass, you know? And this one, just because his previous album was so good, uh, this one, in some ways, this one couldn't help but disappoint. Uh, but anyway, it is Harry's House by Harry Styles. Uh, I re-listened to it a few weeks ago, uh, well, about a month ago or so, and it's almost like I was listening to a completely different album. I don't know why it just needed, I guess it just needed about four months to just sit unlistened and for me to come back to it when the time was right. And the time was right. And as you can tell, it's in my top 10. It's, in my opinion, maybe not as good as uh, Fine Line, but it's still up there. I mean, uh, the single, as it was, of course, is fantastic. Daydreaming is one of my favorite songs, perhaps because it reminds me of the opening track on Fine Line, which was Golden. Just the, the, the beginning of that song reminds me so much of uh, this one here. Uh, Late Night Talking is another great one. And a couple of fantastic ballads on here are Matilda and Boyfriend. Boyfriend has some gorgeous vocal harmonies with, uh, and I believe it's all Harry, uh, multi-tracking against himself. But yeah, such a good album. Uh, I, it just, it, as I said, it just bounced back in a major way, uh, rebounded, and it just, I guess it just needed that time to just sit and, uh, and age into a fine wine, <laughs> or age into a fine grape juice. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah. Harry Styles, Harry's House is number nine on my list of my favorite albums of 2022. Number eight is another vinyl LP that I'm going to squeeze into the screen here. A um, couple of years ago, you might recall, this guy had my number one favorite album of its year, 2020, I think it was. It is Barty Strange, and this is his album, Farm to Table. Excellent stuff. Um, yes, not it's far from number one, but uh, it's... Like I said, there was just so much fierce competition this year. So much fierce competition. And uh, But yeah, this one, honestly, it's been quite a while since I've listened to his debut album, so I would need to listen to that one again and put this put it against this one. But uh, so this one is just fantastic. So many uh, different genres. He is, he is not R&B. He's not strictly indie rock. He's not strictly hip-hop. He kind of uh, meanders between all three of those. Uh, it's just fantastic stuff. Mulholland Drive is probably my favorite song. That one and Escape the Circus have kind of, they do kind of the alt, the alt rock or indie rock kind of a thing. And then there's songs like uh, Cosines, which is pretty much straight up hip hop. And then uh, the song Black Gold is really, really good. It's kind of an acoustic R&B thing. So if you love albums that do not stick to one genre or even two genres, uh, check out Barty Strange. Uh, oh, and the song Tours. Uh, he is the son of... One of his parents is a, a military officer, or was a military officer. So the song Tours is very autobiographical. It's about him, you know, having to uh, live in various different sp different places around the world uh, and, you know, having to uproot himself every time he moved. So it's a very poignant autobiographical song on there. So yes, um, check this one out if you have not yet. A, in my opinion, it's, it's a must-listen. All ten of the, well, all 25 of these, honestly, to some degree, are must-listens. Let's face it. But yes, Farm to Table by Barty Strange. My number eight album of the year. Very deservedly so. Now, number seven on my list is another one that <clears throat> I wish it were in my top five. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm sounding like a broken record here. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, too much competition. Uh, Keb Moe with his album Good to Be. Ah, beautiful. And one of the best album covers of the year, I think. Just, you know, it's his him reaching for his signature hat in uh, the front seat of his, uh, presumably his 62 Chevy, which is the track, the title of track 10, is 62 Chevy. Now this album, um, the first single from it, The Medicine Man, uh, featuring Old Crow Medicine Show, uh, this one, that, that song was put out in, I think it was 2020? It might have been 2021, but it was put out at the height of the pandemic just as the COVID vaccine was becoming available. And so it was, it was a song about, you know, uh, just hang, you know, sit tight, wait for the medicine man to come around and, you know, tell you, know, 
tr trying to convince everybody to keep you know masking up, washing their hands until they get the the vaccine. So yeah, you know, that's how long in the making this album was. It's uh, at least a year, and so yeah, that's a great song. Uh, and so the rest of the album kind of follows suit in that, uh, if not optimism, straight up optimism, at least a mood of perseverance. You know hanging in there, things are hopefully going to get better, is kind of the message of this album, uh, more often than not. It's kind of a, a thread weaving through most of the songs on here. Uh, Louder is a song about uh, how the youth of the country are kind of making their voices heard in uh, so matters of social uh, activism, uh, political activism to an extent. Uh, it's a, good, a song with a great message. Uh, it doesn't lean more toward any particular side. It's just uh, it's just saying that the, the young people of America are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Good to be home again is straight up nostalgia. That's the uh, the opening track. Uh, good strong woman uh, features Darius Rucker, and that one's a message of you know you, you need a good strong woman to, to keep you you know keep you on track and to, to make your life uh, worth meaning is I guess in a way. And uh, then he does a cover of "Lean on Me," the Bill Withers song, and that kind of you know goes goes a very long way toward it, toward encapsulating the message of the album, the mood of the album. So, yeah. As you can tell, I there's so many good songs on this album. Uh, must listen, as are pretty much all of Keb's albums. I've got his entire discography, and this is just right up there with it. Good to be by Keb Mo. And then we have number six. Uh, until this morning, this was in my top five, uh, but I just had to bump it out just a little bit. Uh, this is an artist that um, I was into way back when, and I think it was uh, during my trip to Oklahoma that I kind of rediscovered his music and hadn't listened to any of his albums for many years, and then he put, an, put out a new one this year, and it was one of my favorites of the year. It is Matt Nathanson with his album Boston Accent, some fantastic singer-songwriter pop rock on this album. Uh, great lyrics in a lot of these songs. Uh, Beginners is a great love song. Uh, it's, uh, it has to deal with uh, how a relationship uh, changes and evolves over the uh, over the years that pe people are together. And uh, Futures Here kind of talks about how the future is not what we were hoping it would be uh, in, in stuff. So yeah, it's a good song. Boston Accent deals with the title track, deals with uh, where he grew up and how it shaped or didn't shape the person he became in his adulthood. And uh, lots of other great songs on here. Yeah, just a fantastic, uh, very well done singer-songwriter pop rock, if you're looking for some, something of that. Nice nice and understated. It, it This album is a bit of a grower, so it's not going to hit you right away, as really good singer-songwriter pop never does. But yes, Boston Accent by Matt Nathanson. Excellent album. And now, just like that, we've reached the top five. So let's just somersault headlong into my five favorite albums of 2022. Number five is Bronco by Orville Peck. And as I mentioned in my uh, mid-year countdown, I, I, hopefully I'm not repeating myself too much, but uh, I would imagine that most of you have not seen that video before seeing this one. But uh, yes, as I mentioned in that video, the atmosphere that this album creates, it just is incomparable. In terms of atmospheric this one beats all the others hands down. It's just there are other albums I just purely enjoyed more than this one. But yes, when you put the album on, it just kind of envelops you into this this world that he's created. So much good stuff. And uh, his voice is just one of the most fantastic voices in recent memory, honestly. Kind of a cross between Roy Orbison and Johnny Cash and Elvis. You kind of throw those three into a blender and you get Orville Peck. And just, yeah, the, the instrumentation and his voice just goes toward creating a great mood on this album. And I could give you a list of my favorite songs. Curse of the Blackened Eye is a great one. Uh, Come On Baby Cry, that's another fantastic track. Uh, Trample Out the Days, that's one of, my fav one of my favorites on there. And then he juxtaposes a couple of, you know, a really good ballad, uh, Let Me Drown, along with a really high-energy song, uh, Any Turn. Just those, those two tracks right next to each other. And then uh, the closer is just a beautiful waltz of a song called All I Can Say, and it features Bria Salamena on co-lead vocals. So, but yes, I mean, just 
well, this album is in my top five. What, you know, what more do I need to say? It's just a fantastic album. If you love albums with atmosphere, you, you will not be able to beat this one, I don't think. And uh, yeah, even if you're not a country fan, check this album out. Trust me. It's just fantastic. Bronco by Orville Peck. Amazing album. Number four. Eight years is the longest, I think, that I have been waiting for uh, the next album by any artist on this year's list. And yes, uh, it's been eight years since this guy put out his last album, and it was pretty much worth the wait. It is Paolo Nutini with his album Last Night in the Bittersweet. And yeah, as I said, it was pretty much worth the wait. Uh, another one of the artists that I like that has a distinctive voice. Uh, you pretty much can't uh, miss his voice. Uh, and this album kind of stretches out a little bit more uh, in terms of influences, or at least, you know, um, sonic exploration than his previous albums do. Uh, the song Lose It reminds me a lot of Everybody Knows by Leonard Cohen, uh, one of Leonard, Co Leonard Cohen's lesser known songs, but uh, still, it just, you know, not, not necessarily the melody or the lyrics or anything like that, just kind of the mood or the vibe that the song has. Uh, the song Petrified in Love, it sounds a lot like uh, 80s period Elvis Costello. So that's kind of a, you know, if you like Elvis Costello, check that song out. Uh, Children of the Stars is kind of like Crosby, Stills, and Nash meets Mellencamp. So, you know, it's kind of an Americana kind of thing, but with a little bit, a little bit of a, you know, vocal harmony, 60s vibe sort of thing going on. And Shine a Light reminds me of U2 mixed with R.E.M., so yeah, he kind of kind of stretches uh, into a few different uh, uh, moods of, of rock music here on this album. It keeps the album very enjoyable, and uh, uh, the song "Through the Echoes" is one of my favorite songs of the year. That was, I believe, the the first single off this album. But uh, yeah, I must say, uh, eight years was pretty much worth the wait for the next album by Paolo Nutini. This is "Last Night in the Bittersweet." Check it out. And number four. Oh, no, that was number four. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> it's been a long day. Number three on my list is another straight-up country album, and I have my, my little brother, my friend Noah, to thank for introducing me to this guy. He wouldn't have been on my radar without, uh, without him mentioning it to me. Adeem the Artist with his album White Trash Revelry. That is my number three album of 2022. Uh, what can I say about this guy? I mean, well, this person. Uh, forgive me if I'm getting Adim's pronouns wrong. Uh, Adim prefers they and them pronouns, but they do some such great songs on here, great messages in the songs. Uh, Heritage of Arrogance uh, deals with how uh, racism is unfortunately a fabric of family life in certain areas of the country, and so it's very, very difficult to, uh, to break the cycle of racism. If you're brought up believing something, it can be very hard to undo it, whether it's something positive or something negative. Uh, and so that's a very good uh, message in that song. That's the message I got out of it anyway. And uh, the closing track, My America, that's another song that's got a great message, kind of vaguely similar to uh, Heritage of Arrogance. It just talks about how, you know, America is not uh, not living up to its potential. Let's put it that way. And, uh, oh gosh, there are a couple of really good songs on here. Uh, Middle of a Heart is kind of a heartbreaking song, as the title might suggest. Uh, Redneck Unread Hicks is, uh, that's a good example of uh, Adim's uh, kind of a uh, wry and dry sense of humor. Uh, Run This Town is a really, really great upbeat song. I like that one. Uh, Books and Records, at first, I, I thought when I saw the title of it, it's, oh, it's going to be a song that I'm going to like. Well, not necessarily. It's about somebody who has to sell their books and records to uh, to afford their rent, which is an, an unfortunate reality. That song actually leads into the song My America, so that kind of, maybe uh, Adim was kind of putting a thread through that, that, you know, uh, the cost of living is so ridiculous in this country that uh, it's making America not live up to its potential. So, but yeah, uh, whether you're just looking for a good time uh, you know, music for a good time, or you're looking for meat and potatoes in the lyrics, so to speak. So some really meaningful message lyrics. Uh, you get both on this album, I think, and that what's, that's what makes it so much worth it. 
and what makes it number three on my list of my favorite albums of 2022, White Trash Revelry, Revelry by Adim the Artist. My runner-up for my favorite album of the year, and I kind of hinted at this in uh, my opening of this video, any of these top five at any given time could be my number one. And yes, these two, I've kind of, uh, my number one and number two, I've been switching back and forth a few times, but I decided, for reasons of, for which I'll explain in a minute, why this one is my number two, Being Funny in a Foreign Language by the 1975 uh, a, a Jack Antonoff production, as you can pretty much plainly hear by some of the songs, uh, although this does, uh, just as much, I guess, harken back to the 1975's first two albums. Uh, they, they were you know, very much of a synth-pop throwback kind of a band, and uh, I did not like the 1975's two previous albums. They were too lengthy and started going a little too far out there, uh, a little too weird, too, too disjointed, maybe. Um, but this one is distilled back down to a, a good runtime, nice uh, digestible runtime, and some great, you know, just, just great synth-pop roots, as I, as I suggested. They went back to their synth-pop roots on this album. Uh, but yeah, uh, Happiness is a great song. Uh, Looking for Somebody to Love, as well as uh, I'm in Love with You. It's kind of similar, similar, similar titles, but two great songs, great upbeat songs. And by the way, I'm in Love with You, I think, gets a lot more hate than it deserves. Some people have criticized the song for having a very lyric light chorus. You know, it's just, you know, it's, it's a repetitive chorus, and, you know, the same phrase just repeated. But in my opinion, it's okay every once in a while to have a song that's not so wordy. What's wrong with that? You just, just have a song that's just ear candy. You know, if all of your songs have to have thought-provoking lyrics, in, in a way, your, coin, your albums are going to get kind of tedious after a while. So anyway, that's my thought on that song. But um, Oh Caroline is a great upbeat song. That is one of my favorite songs of the year. Probably my favorite song on the album. But then there's the ballad... All I Need to Hear, that's one of those ballads that sounds like it's always been around. You know, it's just it's just so well-written and so... It just feels so natural that it feels like it's always been a song. You know, like maybe the Beatles wrote it or something. Who knows? But uh, yeah, that's uh, just another highlight on here. Um, Human 2 is another great song on here. So, yeah. Well, hey, pretty much there's not a skipper on this album, really. Uh, so, which is why it's at number two on my list. So, yeah, as I said, um, yeah, being funny in a foreign language by the 1975, my runner-up for favorite album of 2022. And but when it came down to it, <clears throat> as I said, that one and this one were jockeying for the number one. Uh, I kind of had to go with this one for my number one album of the year. Uh, if you saw my mid-year countdown, it was number one back then. I did not expect it to maintain the number one position, but in the end, I've just been a fan of this band for so long that it, you know, and just hearing their music, hearing the lead vocalist, it's like wearing an old uh, an old sweater, a comfy old sweater, or a old great pair of shoes. The Feeling, with their album Lost Hope Love, is my number one favorite album of 2022. And yes, I've been a fan of The Feeling, well... I was a fan of The Feeling back in uh, 2006 when they came out with, with their first three albums. After that, I dropped off of them for quite a while uh, until I heard about this album, uh, listened to a couple of singles. The first single, I think, was called There Is No Music. <laughs> Songs about music for me. And so that, that kind of sucked me right back in. And there were a couple of their albums between their third album and this one is their sixth album that I never picked up or no, one of them I picked up for some reason, it never grew on me, and I got rid of it. So, But this album, I picked it up, loved it so much that it got me to go back and pick up the albums I had missed. Uh, I, I found a great lot on eBay of, like, four of their albums all together, packaged all together. So it was, you know, kind of a no-brainer to just pick them up at that opportunity. And so, yeah, is it Tim Rice Oxley, who is the lead vocalist? You know, as I said, I've been listening to his voice off and on since 2006. Uh, so it was, it was like, you know... Memories come back, or, you know, a, a comfy old feeling comes back when you listen to his voice. He's still there at the uh, in the lead vocals. Uh, same band members, I think, the, the whole time. But, uh, yeah, the, the song There Is No Music is a great highlight. Uh, there's a word for it. Basically serves as the title track. Uh, cause in, in the uh, 
throughout the verses of the song, it incorporates the words loss, hope, and love. So in a way, it serves as the title track. Uh, and, and that song, it's kind of interesting because um, it doesn't really have a static chorus, that song. So, and, you know, I really like songs that have a verse-chorus, verse-chorus structure, very conventional song structure. But every once in a while, when a song comes along that breaks that rule, I kind of like it. And this is one of those. Uh, and it also has a kind of a, a soft trumpet in the background, which kind of gives it a bit of an 80s vibe. So that's another plus for me for that song. Uh, the song On the Edge is kind of an, an anthem for the uh, outcasts, an anthem for the freaks, basically. Um, oh, I don't have the chorus in my head right now, but uh, I would if I, uh, if I did, I would recite the lyrics. Uh, and the song For the Future is another fantastic highlight on here. But yeah. Honestly, there's there's not a song to dislike on this album, really, uh, which is why it's at number one. My number one favorite album of 2022 is Lost Hope Love by The Feeling. Uh, did not expect that one to be number one on my list, but there you go. So we have reached the end of my 2022 year in Spectacular-ish. I deserve a drink. Hang on. Uh, my voice is shot. Uh, I hope you guys had as much fun as I did with all the videos this week. Uh, and we're going to do it all again uh, 11, 11 months from now. Yay. Anyway, <laughs> I've got 11 months to rest up. Let's put it that way. So anyway, that'll do it for this video and for Tom's Hit Parade's 2022 year-end spectacular-ish. I hope you enjoyed this video and every video this week. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my fellow favorite YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.